Kathy and from Kathy's Key Creations with week four of the Fort Worth Fabric Suddenly Summer Quilt. And today we get to do the popsicle blocks. I am so happy. You should have two pages. Your second page has got the popsicles on it. So this looks like a pretty good block. And I won't jinx myself by saying I might not be able to make it. But I found some really cute fabric to work on that next, on that block. To figure it out whatever it is i'm not going to show you it'll end up being a surprise but i do have some cute fabric to use in place of those blocks having them corrected so if you haven't watched my last video you don't know what i'm talking about but you can go back and catch the last week and you'll know what i'm talking about so moving forward let's get started on the popsicle blocks i have all of it laid out here it looks like it's a lot, but it's going to make four blocks. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing it wants us to do is we're going to take our little squares, our white one and a half by one and a half, which is a whole bunch of them, a little stack like this. And we're going to put these on the edges of our strips to make the popsicle. All right, let's get started. Okay, the very first thing we're going to do is mark all of our little squares. I split them up into little piles of eight called Fabric E. And this is Fabric E. I think it's asking for D and E. Let's make sure. No, it's asking for E and J. Oh, this is J. I'm sorry, it is. J is the stripes. Okay, so what they want us to do is they want us to put the little squares. Now, make sure you're putting them in the right direction. This is going to be the left-hand side of Popsicle. They want you to take your little square and we're going to put it catty corner like this. So we're not going to sew from this little tip. We're going to sew from down here. Then we're going to cut this excess off. We're going to fold it over and it's going to look like that. And then this is going to go on the left hand side of the popsicle. Alrighty. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do all of these. We'll just chain stitch them. And then on this side, because this is going to be the other side. So let's do it like this. So you've got an idea of what it looks like. And we're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to sew it from here to there. And then we're going to flip that up like that. So that'll be on each side. And then we're going to take the gingham and the flowered, whatever your fabric colors are. And we're going to put these all together. But first we're going to do all of these so they can be finished. And then we'll add the other two strips. So let's do that first. And I'll go ahead and we'll chain stitch them. It'll be really, really fast. I don't think you need to put any kind of pens or anything in this because I think that it should pretty well just stay put on your fabric and hopefully I will not need a leader ender. Let's just check it out. Go real slow. Hopefully my hands are not in the way. There we go. And then just add another one. Just remember which direction it's going in. Pink is the right hand side of the popsicle so this needs to go towards the right. My hands are going to be in the way. I'm so scared my line's not going to go straight. Or my stitching, not my line. My line is straight, but my stitching. I don't keep my hand on it. One way to remember this is that we flipped this and now it's on the left side. Before when we started it was on the right side, now it's on the left. So if you haven't switched over, then you've got your little piece of fabric on incorrectly. time to cut so take your ruler and mark it a quarter inch and then just take it off the edge there we're gonna iron it open just like that every one of them or you can finger press it whatever you want to do it's gonna be up to you I'm going to iron them however go ahead and cut all yours out iron them open and then we'll come back now I'm jumping out of order because I'm actually going to the third step not the second step the next the second step was making the popsicles I want to go ahead and put these together. So you should have 16 white, 8 stone color, whatever that color is. And we're going to put the white on the outside, just like this. Make sure that your right sides are together. And we're going to build a block just like that. So I'm going to do all of these 8 sides before I flip them over. I put the shorter piece of fabric 
and I'm going to start out slow so I don't need to use my meter ender. mom and dad had those little Tupperware containers and made homemade popsicles because that's the way I remember the popsicles. The ones that you see that are oval that you buy in the store nowadays, we couldn't afford those. And I didn't know anything about those until I was 10 and managed to get an ID card. That's the first card I got was an ID card to go shopping at the commissary because we were in the, my dad was in the branch of the Air Force. And so we went shopping every two weeks, was, which was our payday. And that's when I went to the, we went by the frozen department and saw what a real popsicle looked like. I always thought they were the, that you had to make them. I didn't realize that you could actually buy them. Of course, that was the way it was with a lot of things. Cakes and pies and all that kind of thing. I thought you had to bake that from scratch. I didn't realize you could buy that at the grocery store already made. But of course, it was high priced. And now you would think it was super duper cheap, but for us, it was a high priced item. Because when we lived overseas, our, the first place that we went as a family overseas was in Japan. And I lived there for, I think it was four years. I think I'm not quite sure but when we came stateside my mom and dad or my father okay they had one car and it actually we had stored it and when he picked it up of course all the tires were flat because it had been in storage for so long he got all the tires fixed and and we spent a day at the garage while they fixed it up so that we could travel and then when we got to our destination, which happened to be in Texas, he got three jobs. This is what you should have. All of these made now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and connect this strip and this strip together before I connect them to those strips. So let's do that next. I'm going to try it without any pins, but as soon as it starts getting off kilter there, I'm going to stop and start pinning. Anyway, as I was saying, so he got three jobs. Well... The day job was the service job, so that was like 7.30 to 4 or something like that. And then when he got done, he worked at a furniture store. And then on the weekends, he worked at another job, but I do not know what that job was. I just know that we never saw him for the longest time. And one time I asked him, why did he have to work so much? I didn't understand it because he'd only had one job while we were overseas. And he said to buy the house and all the furniture and everything that he needed to make payments on all that stuff monthly so he was trying to get it paid off and once he got it paid off he said that he would quit his other jobs and after a couple of years that's exactly what he did so he was back down to one job and then when he was at the one job my little brother was old enough to go to school and so my mother went and worked at the um what was it called it was the restaurant that was on the base but i can't think of the name of it but there was a you know, he was not an officer so it was the regular quarters there was two different restaurants one for the officers and one for the enlisted and she worked at the one that was for the enlisted so he would take her to work every morning and she had to be there a little bit early so he would take her and then he would drink coffee and then when it was time for him to go to work then he would just get in the car and go to work and at that time we had one car then eventually we ended up with two different cars and she had that job the entire time that we lived down there and I think we were there quite a while and then the next place we went to we ended up in um, Elmendorf, up at Elmendorf Air Force Base which was Anchorage Alaska and I was up there for four and a half years before we came stateside but then my dad was diagnosed with cancer and then he was asked to get out of the service he was a career guy so he wanted to uh, keep it as his career and he lasted or he was in the service for 23 before he got his cancer and was asked to get out and then he retired and then he did jobs after he was retired he went ahead and did jobs like in the town that he lived in he was the um, the manager over the vegetables in a grocery store that was one of his jobs he took some classes at the Votech and learned electrician and all that. And he ended up building uh, my mom and dad's home out on some land. Then he worked. After that, he quit that job. And then he did um, 
lawn mowing. That was his next job. So he had a trailer behind, you know, like the guys nowadays, they got all two and three different lawn mowers and weed eaters and weed whackers, whatever you all want to call them. Now you should have that. And, that's, and I ironed it towards the red. And now we're going to attach it. I'm going to attach it to the left side. This is the left side of the popsicle. And you're going to attach the red to the red and the pink to the pink. But I'm just going to do the red to the red like that. And when it came to that lawn mowing, my mom and dad were like a team. So she usually rode the lawn mower and he did the weed eating. And then he did the cutting around the little small things like, you know, the cement or or something like a tree or something like that if it needed a push mower but anyway they enjoyed it now backtracking a little bit when they lived up in alaska my mother drove the school bus and boy can she tell you the stories about that oh my gosh i couldn't even believe some of them first thing as you know it does snow up there and it is a lot of snow and it is snow more than it is sunshine and warmth and there was no acting up on a bus and when I say there was no acting up on a bus, I mean, if you wanted to be a smart aleck or you wanted to be a bully or something like that, you saved that for when you weren't on the bus. Because my mother took no bull from any child on a bus. Now she, and nine times out of ten, most of you rode a bus. Okay? Because a lot of them lived out remotely or didn't live anywhere where you could be taken in. And so you were more or less stuck, I mean... With the bus and one time she told me about this one kid that would not sit in his seat and he was acting up now of course you know if you got the same bus route you know all those kids you know who they are you get to know their parents i mean that's the kind of atmosphere it was and you knew that when you got on the bus you sat down because you know you're driving in dangerous uh dangerous times when you know you might have ice on the road it isn't like down here when it when you have a heavy snow and it's three or four foot they're plowing the roads 24 7 up there and they're hauling out the extra in a truck so you're going to school no matter what their school is not closed up there there's nothing going to close a school okay that said she had this kid on her bus and he started I guess um, I can say that he was grab assing. I guess I could say that. If I can't, they'll cut that out. But anyway, and she told him to sit down. And he more or less told her no. She pulled that bus over. Now, they were nowhere because they're like out in the country, mind you. She pulled it over. This is in the winter. This is three foot of snow on the ground, if not more. She told him to get his little butt off that bus and that he'll call, she'll call the school and he can have a parent come pick him up. And I mean, he was like, oh, no, 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 and all that. And she goes, I told you to get off my bus. I gave you enough warning. You're not listening. You don't get any more chances. And he got off the bus and they all had, now this is before cell phones, mind you, okay? And she called the school and she told him, I let so-and-so off and she told him where he was located and she goes, you can either get another bus to come get him, you can get his parents to come get him, I don't care who you come to get him, but he is making it dangerous on my bus and he's off. And so they said, okay, and they went out to get him. Now, back then, and this is in the 19, when was it? 70s. So we're talking early 70s, okay? This is when the parents and the school and everybody had your back. There was none of this, my kid's right, you're wrong, la di da di da -di. So his mother and his father come down on him and believe me, the very next day, I think he, actually, I think he was uh, put off the bus for like, when, when something like that happens, I think he had three days he was expelled. And then he couldn't ride the bus for like a week or something. I don't know who took him to work. I guess his mom and dad did. But, you know, that was a that's a great big huge inconvenience when you're one of those kids that rides the bus up there. If you're riding the bus, it's because both your folks work. Maybe you only got one car and you can't get the kid to school. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons. Otherwise, you're not riding the bus. Anyway, after that week was up and he come back to the bus, he got on the bus. And the first thing he did was he apologized to my mother. And he apologized to everybody on that bus and told them he would never, ever endanger anybody's life again by acting the way he did. And then he sat down and took his seat, and that was that. Okay, so let me add a little bit to this story here. 
So you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, what if he didn't have adequate clothing on? Well, first off, you're not permitted on a school bus if you don't have clothing for the weather. And the reason for that is that at any time while you're on that bus, if that bus breaks down and they can't get a bus to you right away, you have to keep warm. So you have to be adequately dressed because people aren't going to be taking their coats off to give you when they're cold. So you're wearing boots and gloves and I mean you're the whole attire. It's not like the kids today who catch a bus and don't even wear a jacket or anything. No hoods, they're out there with no scarves. It's too cold for that kind of stuff. You could get frostbite, you could die. So that doesn't happen. Also, as far as the traffic goes, when you drive a car, you have emergency supplies in your car. You'll have blankets in your car. You might have, uh, you'll have a first aid kit. You may even have some kind of little heating thing if your car breaks down and you can't go anywhere. And if somebody, if you see somebody, let's say that you're driving down the street and you're going to the grocery store and you're on the, the main drag, okay? And you see a car broke down. Now this is before cell phones, mind you, so it's probably totally different nowadays. But you stopped and you offered help. You didn't leave somebody stranded on the side of the street. That is not what you do when it's a life and death situation. And every time a car breaks down, it is a life and death situation. You know, I'm not even sure if I should be even talking about anything other than Fort Worth Fabric Studios fabric and supplies or anything like that through this video. So I hope somebody will let me know if I'm out of line by talking about, you know, some personal things and stuff like that because I'm not trying to be uh, wrong about something, if that's the case. You know, you can shut the volume down if you don't want to hear about what all is going on in my life. If it's too much information, just turn the volume down. Not really, really nice. I like the way these are looking. Where do you think these popsicles are? Strawberry, cherry, and they're kind of pink. I guess they, I don't know if they had Hawaiian punch. Usually the red ones were cherry or strawberries. The Kool-Aid that we used to buy to make ours was, they came only in those little packets by Kool-Aid. They didn't even have the off brands. At least I'm not aware of them having an off brand. That was before you could make them where they already have sugar in them. Because these didn't have sugar in them. You had to put your own sugar when you made these. Sort of like Kool-Aid. You had to make your own, you had to put your own sugar in your Kool-Aid too when it first started out. Because it was just the little powdered stuff. I remember being a kid and we used to buy those little powdered containers and put our own little sugar in there. And scoop it out by the finger full, man. That's what we used to do. Alrighty, the body of the popsicle has been made. Now we're gonna take these that we made before and we're gonna add them to the bottom of those. That'll get you in the frame there. We're gonna take the bottom of the popsicle stick and we're gonna add it to that. Now if you wanna be perfectly straight with that line, take your little square down here, well, a little bit rectangle, line it up seam to seam like this. Here's the seam right here. I've got one going one way and one going the other direction just so you can see. Nestle them up there, give it a little squeeze, and there it shows. And then that is lined up, and all you gotta do is put it right over that, pin it, and we'll sew it. Chain stitch those. All right, I got them all laid out. They're all going the correct way. This is the top, this is the bottom, and I did not go down the middle with all of them. I said the heck with it. Sometimes the stick is to the right, sometimes to the left. Let's not make it perfect. And now I'm just going to go ahead and chain stitch them. You guys do the same thing and then we'll All come right, back. So we're going to have eight of them when we're finished and we're going to split them up into fours because we want to have a popsicle on the right hand side and a popsicle on the left hand side. So for this one here, we're going to take our two and a half by four and a half inch and we're going to put them to the bottom of this before we put the sides on. So we're going to do that first. Be sure and put it right sides together. Don't do it backwards now. And we're going to go right across the bottom of it. That's that one. Well, that was a bust because it did not film me sewing that entire side. I've taken it off, pinned the other side, and now I'm going to sew this side. Hopefully my camera will work this time. Let's see. Okay, so it's going. You didn't miss anything because I actually didn't say anything. All I did was just sew that other side just like this.
Okay, now we have four, figure four finished, and we're moving on to the next block. Now we're going to take our one and a half by nine and a half, and we're going to attach it on the right hand side only. Not both sides, just the right side, because we're going to build this block. After we add this one, we're going to put that on the top. And this is our two and a half by five and three quarters. And we're gonna do that to all four of our blocks. So let's go ahead and do that. I only pinned them in two spots where the seam is at and that's it. Now it's telling us to put this strip on here. And I don't think I'm going to pin it because I'm looking at it and I'm putting it on here. Make sure your right sides are together. And as I lay it on there, I think it's going to work. I'm just going to go ahead and sew it straight across. You do the same thing. All right, so quick question here. On the directions, it said we can iron our popsicle one way or the other, whichever way we wanted to iron it. So here's my thing. Here's the question now. Did you iron it all one direction? For example, when I ironed it, I went up with that. Okay, remember these three were put on together. These four right here, not this one. So these all went up. But the problem is I hid the spot I need to mark. Here's the spot that needs to be marked. So we really need to have it flipped this way. So avoid having this twist. What you're gonna need to do, if you're like me, is you're gonna need to fix this. So the first thing I do is I unstitch this part that is stitched down. Not this seam here, this right here. So I take it and I open it up like that. And now I have to restitch this. So you're gonna take it and you're gonna fold it over like this and you're gonna stitch it right along here until I get about right there and then I'll quit. Want me to repeat that for you? Get you a little closer. Okay, so it looks like this. You're gonna need to take the stitches out that are holding this piece down to this because I would have come across here and stitched all that down. So you take it out, flip it over. You can go ahead and iron it if you want. Then you're gonna take your fabric. You're gonna fold it just like you were stitching all over again. And then you're gonna come from the top to all the way to here and then quit. I ironed mine first and then I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna stitch it. Just start at the end as if you had not stitched it before. You're still doing the quarter inch. If you can see your seam, go ahead and come across it. It's like having a double stitch on it. Come all the way, go past it into the next one. You do not need to back it up. That's it. Cut it. You're done. Pull it out. And there you go. Because we need to mark in order to put the top on. So let me get the next fabric and I'm going to show you how to mark. Two places need to be marked. Here where it came across, two stitches came across each other, and down here where two came across each other so that we don't lose our points. And we're gonna sew on this side of the fabric. Pin it like that. That's where my mark is at. Here's where my mark is at. You can put another one up here if you want. I'm not going to, I'm gonna watch it. Well, I probably ought to because that's the one that flips, isn't it? So let's put a pin in there. This one will be okay. And then we'll start here and we'll work our way down. We'll be real careful when we go across here so we don't take our tips off. All right, let's do that. All right, we're gonna do this one together, but then you're gonna do your other three on your own. Cause I don't want this video to be too long. Slow down when you get to the mark on your fabric. Slowly take your time. Do your other ones and then we'll be done. All right, so you should have four, four that don't have a side on them. And four that do, these are on the top, these are on the bottom. We're gonna connect them to each other and then we're gonna take a strip across the top. So let's connect these together, all four of these. All right, let's do this one together and then you can do the other three. And then all we'll have left is to put the top on. So we're joining our popsicles. We'll be real careful when we come here so we don't flip over our seam right there. Go ahead and do all four of yours. So you got five that look like that. And they want that strip across the top, which we're going to do right now. Now, don't forget to mark it. And we're going to do this one together. And then you're going to do all the rest. And then we're going to be finished and we're going to lay them out here. There we go, four popsicle blocks. I really like the way these turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, make a comment, click on that little bell, subscribe, and I will see you next week for week five. We're coming to the closing pretty soon. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.